Hey guys, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope that you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the planet today or on the planet today. If you're in the planet, it might not look so good for you. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're having a beautiful day. And today in this video, what we're going to do is a three card oracle card reading. Now, I love doing these oracle card readings simply because it puts us into connection with all that is possible for us. I truly believe if we ask, it shall be given. I believe that. And so if we ask a question of spirit and we come into the interaction with an open heart and believing in the reality that spirit will answer, I believe that spirit always does. Another reason I like this type of exercise is it puts us into connection with our personal system, how we work in terms of intuition. Because some of us receive things, well, all of us receive things a bit differently. Some of us are clairvoyant, meaning we see images or we see flashes something like a video going by in our mind's eye, and this is how we receive our messaging. Others actually hear things. We can hear words in, in our head, or we can actually hear tones and frequencies and different things like that, while others feel into the world of spirit. We call this clairsentience. They actually get emotions or feel things in their physical body to prompt them as to the way they should go or what they should know. And last but not least, of course, there's claircognizance, which is the spontaneous knowing of things in the world of spirit. One moment you don't know, have no idea, and the next moment it's Eureka, aha, I get it, I got that download, and now I know. That's claircognizance. And some of us are stronger in clairvoyance, but not so strong in clairaudience. Others are really clairsentient, but not really claircognizant. However, I want you to know, we all have all of the clairs. It's just a matter of working with them. The clairs are like muscles. And what happens to muscles when you actually exercise? I really wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm joking. But what happens to muscles when we actually work with them and train them? Well, they grow and we get stronger. But what happens to muscles when we don't work on them, when we're not training with them, when we're not utilizing them? Well, they atrophy, they get weaker, they diminish. And it's the same thing with our intuitive abilities. When we work with them and when we're really paying attention to how it works for us, that's how we can cause them to grow. So that's what this exercise is meant to do. But again, also, this is just plain fun. So let's have some fun today. Today, we are getting an oracle card reading from John Holland's Psychic Tarot. How many of you out there have this deck? Comment below. I love this deck. It's got like gilded cards. The artwork is really pretty. But most of all, I really dig John Holland. Have you ever just seen somebody on TV or on YouTube or in an interview and you just kind of knew that they were a good person or that they had integrity? I really like John Holland because I've always just had a sense that he was Pono or he was a solid person. Also, I reference John Holland from time to time in my teaching because I heard him say something, and when he said it, it really clicked for me. A certain principle clicked for me, and, and basically an interviewer asked him, so John, when you're doing psychic readings or when you're working with spirits, do you ever get oppressed? Do demons ever harass you? Do they ever follow you home? Are you ever afraid? And John Holland just kind of went like, no, not, not at all. They're not. That's not a reality for me. I don't even consider that as a possibility that I would be harassed, oppressed, possessed by a spirit or a demon. And therefore, because it's not a reality for me, it doesn't happen. And I love that. That is what Neville Goddard calls living in the end, y'all. He's living in his truth. He's vibrating that. That's what he believes. And that's also who he is being. And as a result, it doesn't happen in his life. And it works the same for us. If we believe that that's just never going to happen, if we know who it is that we actually are in terms of our sovereignty, dominion, and power, well, <laughs> we don't get harassed. I don't get harassed. Do you get harassed? Well, you might want to change your belief system. That was just an affirmation from John Holland. And his deck is cool. All right, we've got three cards. Are you ready? First and foremost, have a question. What do you want to know? What do you want some guidance around? Second of all, make sure you have some awareness. What's going on? How's the information coming through? What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you cards without showing you their meaning. So I'll show them to you like this. Cards one, two, and three. And then you are going to see which card connects with you the most. We're going to ask spirit to let you know in a way that you will not miss that that card is for you. Again, you may hear a tone. You may feel something in your body. You may just automatically know that's what it is. Maybe you see clairvoyantly one, two, or three, but pay attention and notice how it works for you as well. And then don't change your answer. 
when you see the answers, you might be like, oh, I really liked card two though. I'm gonna choose card two. No, we're asking for guidance from spirit. Let spirit guide us. Spirit always comes to us in love. Always, always, always. So trust the process and trust the message. Are you ready? You ready for card number one? I am. All right, I'm gonna hold it up and you're gonna see how you feel about this card. Card number one. I'm also gonna look at this card and I'm gonna telepathically transmit to you because all things are possible, the meaning of this card. Card number one. Are you feeling anything here? Notice what's coming in. Card number one. On to card number two, and I apologize for the person mowing their yard outside. It never fails. Okay. Card number two. Dos. De. Card number two. How does that feel to you? Do you notice anything shift within you as you contemplate card number two? Card number two. Last but not least, never, never least, is card number three. Card number three. Sending you the meaning of this card as well. Check in. See if you feel anything. Sense anything. Remembering to notice how it's coming in for you. Card number three. Right on. Okay. I'm going to show them very quickly again. Card number one. Card number two. And card number three. All right. Now what I want you to do as a show of faith, that you are trusting the promptings of spirit. No matter how murky, even if you're doubting yourself, you're going to drop down into the comments and you're going to say card number one, two, or three before you even receive the meaning of the cards. Now what that does is, again, it's a demonstration or a declaration of your faith in the process, not just how it works for you, but also that spirit always shows up when we come with an open heart and a question. Spirit always does. So trust that. Drop down into the comments and let me know the number of the cards you picked, one, two, or three. And when you've done that, you might want to pause it if it takes a little moment. Come back into the video and let's do the reveal. We are going to reveal first card number one. Card, oh, pretty, right? Balance. Balance. This card represents the need for balance and harmony with your inner life as well as with what's surrounding you in the physical world. This denotes that some lifestyle adjustments are required at this time, it could be associated with love, relationships, business, or even your career. The balance card is also being shown to you to make you realize that what you perceive to be happening around you right now is really an externalization of an inner process or conflict that you may be currently experiencing. Word. Just as Neville Goddard says, everything is just you pushed out. Everything is just, just you pushed out. So if you are experiencing something that's a conflict or that's troublesome, it's just you pushed out. It, the genesis of this originates somewhere within you. That doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you're broken. It just means that you have to do that inner work and seek this balance. This card will often appear if you work in the legal field or when you're involved in law-related matters. Have faith that justice will triumph as justice and karma go hand in hand. One caveat here, it doesn't need to just be legal matters. It doesn't have to be about the law. This is about fairness, reciprocity, and things of that nature. Have faith that justice will triumph as justice and karma go hand in hand. Take only what you've earned. Treat people fairly and don't take advantage of anyone. This is all part of living a balanced and a karmic life. When determining something, there must be a state of balance emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually so that you can make rational decisions and logical judgment. 
judgments. This is a time to be honest and caring and responsible for the choices that you've made as well as the ones that will be made in the future. This card is specifically connected to the tarot archetype justice. All right, that's the first card, balance. So those of you who picked number one, how does that land with you? Again, don't just focus on legalities or rights and wrongs. What is this card really telling you? All right, next we are going to card number two. Are you ready for card number two? I am. This card is disruption. Disruption. Now, before you get all crazy and scared, don't be scared. Let's listen to the meaning of this card. A sudden, usually unforeseen disruption or major change is happening or is about to take place. Even if it appears to be a negative experience, it can lead to enlightenment or a total shift in your lifestyle. In traditional tarot meanings, this card represents the falling tower that eventually crumbles due to its weak foundation. Whichever part of your life you focus on, this is an opportunity to rebuild with a solid, positive structure to make you or the situation even stronger. There are times when the most difficult situations arise in your life. If you choose to, they can act as a catalyst to heal other areas of your life. They're beneficial because true, they're truly your greatest teachers. Learn from past mistakes accept them, and integrate them into your life as stepping stones. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. This disruption card is a reminder that negative thinking, limiting beliefs, ignoring problematic situations, and risky or careless lifestyles must be addressed so that positive changes can take place. Life has a habit of moving you forward whether you're ready or not. Transformation of body, mind, and soul can happen if you view the dramatic time or change as an opportunity for growth. In the future, you may look back and be thankful for this opportunity. This card, again, is connected to the tarot archetype of the tower. Card number two. Card number two. Last but not least, card number three. You ready for card number three? This actually popped out twice before I actually selected it. So this is for some of you. I just know it. Card number three is also number three in the deck, interestingly. And this card is fertility. Before all you ladies start getting nuts out there thinking you're going to get pregnant, bear with me. Okay, fertility. Through this card, the manifestation of growth is on the horizon. You're the creator, and the seeds that have been planted in the past, whether they were happiness and comfort, abundance, prosperity, family, children, ideas, or even just thoughts, are now ready to give birth into your world. Be patient as you watch your seeds take root and grow. Nurture them as they become strong and healthy. Open yourself up to the life force of the universe. This card also represents femininity and Mother Earth, who is calling to you. The arms of her beauty are reaching out. She wants to embrace you on her seashores, mountains, forests, and gardens. Go to her and meet her halfway. Acknowledge that the same energy that makes up the heavens, earth, plants, animals, and mineral kingdom is also part of you. Start nurturing yourself and infuse your soul with love and compassion. Soon, others will see and feel your devotion. As you interact with others around you now, or even if you're in the midst of solving a problem, make sure to use gentle care and kindness as you handle such situations. This isn't a time for you to be inconsiderate, possessive, domineering, forceful, or pushy, and I'll just add there's never a time for you to do that, so just know that. Act instead from the loving space of your heart center. The benevolent energy that resides there will assist you in making sacrifices in order to care for and help others as well as yourself. This card is connected in the tarot to the archetype of the Empress. The Empress can mean actual fertility, but it's also the gestating of something coming, something new emerging into the world. And there is this connection to abundance. There is this connection to home and hearth and also a good feeling that goes along with that. To recap, balance, card number one. Card number two, disruption, a change is happening now or it's coming. Don't let it derail you. It's a catalyst for enlightenment. And last but not least, fertility, gestating on something awesome that's coming into your experience, all that is possible, and all the nurturing you need to do for yourself and others. 
Three great cards. I should just say that before I pick any cards, I talk to Spirit about it. We shuffle it, we do our thing, and then I actually run my hands over the cards and I wait for Spirit to flash a light in my mind's eye, which is like a blue light or a white, uh, white light. It usually always happens. Or Spirit will sometimes drag a finger down, like it's actually pulling on a string, and that's how I know I'm gonna use this finger, swipe down and pick a card. So those are your three cards, and I would love if you would now drop back down into the comments and let me know how that resonates with you and if it makes sense for you. I want to just close by saying I love Oracle card decks. Some might even say I have an Oracle card issue, but I don't think it's an issue. I think it's a blessing. And Hay House right now is actually having a sale on their Oracle cards. And I want to thank, uh, who said this? Oh, it was Kathy Sue in the Lightworkers Lab and also Patty, who also turned me on to this. I went up on their website yesterday. I want to say I got like nine or 10 decks. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. But they look so pretty and I just love cards. They're such a great way to just get some information from spirit. There's all kinds of ways to receive this kind of knowledge and energy if we just ask. And cards are a great tool to do just that. So if you want to get $9 decks galore, go to hayhouse.com and check it out. And on that note, I've got nothing. And I mean nothing but love for you, baby. Join me this year at the 2019 Bliss Retreat in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The Bliss Retreat is a four-night, five-day, blissed-out extravaganza where there will be sacred ceremonies, spiritual workshops, and nightly services with me, Crystal Ann Compton. Go to theblissretreat.org to learn more. I hope to see you there.